Joining us now is Oji. Oji Nika. Genix, okay. <laughs> you did it. <laughs> we started turning around the world. Hello, well, Genix. Good, good morning, morning, Dr. Abati. How are you this morning? Good. Great. Good morning, Tundu. Morning, Oji. How are you this morning? Great, thank you. Great, Victoria. Good I'm morning. Like, Oji Nika is back. No, you are back. <laughs> Dr. Abati brought it back. I hope you, I, exactly. I hope you really enjoyed your vacation. Ah, stressed. <laughs> We're going to discuss over implications today. Yes. <laughs> well, all right. <laughs> Good morning to you viewers. Here are some of the stories that are trending across the globe. In the United States, Twitter on Wednesday reported that it had mistakenly suspended around a dozen accounts that were posting about Russian military movements. Twitter spokesperson said the erroneous action had been based on its rules against synthetic and manipulated media. In Ukraine, ministers accused President Vladimir Putin of launching a full-scale invasion of the country as explosives were heard in several cities within hours of the Russian leader's announcement that he had ordered military action in the country's east. President Vladimir Zelensky, in response, declared martial law. In Italy, Pope Francis has reacted to the threat of a Russian war on Ukraine. The pontiff said the threat causes great pain in his heart and urged politicians to make a serious examination of conscience before God about the effects of their actions. Under sports, the Super Falcons of Nigeria qualified for the 2022 Africa Women's Cup of Nations on Wednesday following a 1-0 victory over the Lady Elephants of Côte d'Ivoire. And Nigeria's table tennis legend, Funke Oshinaike, announced she survived a ghastly accident on Wednesday. Taken to Facebook, the table tennis star shared photos of her crushed car with the caption, He saved me. The 46-year-old is the first woman to participate in seven Olympic Games in table tennis. Finally, under entertainment, Matt Hutchins, the husband of the late cinematographer Helena Hutchins, who was shot and killed on the set of the film Rust, has responded to Alec Baldwin's claim that he is not to be blamed for the shooting. Hutchins said he was so angry when Baldwin did not accept responsibility in his first public interview since the death of his wife in October 2021. Watching him, I just felt so angry. I was just so angry to see him talk about her death so publicly in such a detailed way and then to not accept any responsibility after having just described killing him. Now let's begin what's trending. Godwin Emefele, governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria on Wednesday, debunked reports indicating that he purchased three airplanes for his alleged presidential campaign. The CBN governor took to his Twitter account, which he recently opened, to debunk the news with the caption, fake news. The development comes days after the CBN governor spoke with a group of his friends tagged Friends of Godwin Emefele, who visited him to discuss the controversy over his rumored presidential ambition and the calls for him to resign his position. While the governor was quoted as saying he would prefer to leave the matter in God's hands. Well, let's take a Twitter reaction before we discuss. This is from Kalu, who wrote, If the Central Bank of Nigeria's governor, Godwin Emefele, is seeking to contest for the presidency, then the loans he is approving at below NPR are campaign donations. The governor must, in the interest of corporate governors, state his position or resign. Tundra Abiola, over to you. Do you agree with this Twitter user? Must he in order at this to point? agree or disagree, I'd have to understand the tweet. I okay. don't get it. Okay, so basically there's been this controversy about Godwin Emefele contesting or, you know, he's probably... No, it's the trying. campaign donations. Oh, you mean the campaign donations. Well, what, what basically the NPR, below NPR, you have to explain that to uh, Tundu Abiola. It's basically... I know what the, NPR is. I'm oh. just saying it makes no sense. Why? I don't understand the logic. I really, I just Well, don't because it's so logic. below, he's say, they're saying that it's going to be... Con it, sh it may be considered as campaign donations. It's just one of those rhetorics uh, at this but point. But I don't Twitter. understand this yeah. um, practice of just 
posting rhetoric. I think people should just always try to be factual and they should try to be fair. Right. I know it's the season of you know, maligning people and smearing people, but let's just try to be fair every so often. The, the point I was trying to make is not that I don't understand what NPR is. I just don't understand why the point they of that. Oh, well, yes. It's, I just it's, think it's, it's, not, it's unnecessary. Right. I think it's a bit... Um, I think people should be a little bit more restrained about that NPR part. But then the part that the point of declaring your intention, whether you're going to run or not, when you're occupying a really important public office. I suppose it's part of what we're seeing now with the electoral amendment bill that requires people in um, serving in public positions to resign rather than continue to run and sort of take advantage of their position so that they have an advantage against their opponents. If that's the point, I get that. But I just really want some restraint. And even the story that you've started with, the claim that he bought three jets. Yeah, there are so many stories. Based on what? On this social. is just that season, Well, it's I good guess, that he has but, debunked it. Yeah, but then should he have to? Why do people lie? This is my point. Can people just not be factual right. and fair and just let people decide? If Godwin Amefele decides to run for president, people that want to vote for him will. People that don't want to won't. There's really never any need to, for this kind of... Attacks, but I guess that's the nature of the game, and that's why I did say the other day that politics is dirty. I just yeah. find it also regrettable I guess and the main, unnecessary. The main question I wanted to ask you is: Should he declare his intention to run? That's what I was going to ask. Anybody you. who wants yeah. to contest should declare right. an intention to contest. Right. But there's no need to be telling lies and saying people bought a jet because the the story of people buying a jet, three jets, or what have you will go halfway around the world before your refutal mm. comes. And by the time you decide to refute it, half of the people who've read the story are already wedded to it. Mm. The one thing people don't like is to change their minds. People don't like to be proved wrong. So it, rather than say, oh, new information has come, what's that man's name? Maynard Keynes, the famous mm. the economist. He famously said, when I hear new information, I change my mind. What do you do, sir? Right. A lot of people would rather just be entrenched in the erroneous position they've already taken because they have taken that position, which is why it's irresponsible to just lie on people. I just, I, I truly despair. It's unnecessary. Yeah, it's the, it's the world that we live in. We see this all the time. That's why uh, Donald Trump is always campaigning against fake news, right? Dr. Abati. Well, I don't understand why uh, Godwin Emefiel uh, opening a Twitter account is big news. I mean, he's just a citizen like any other person, right. and he has the right to express himself, to use whatever platform. And this is Twitter handle, is titled at Godwin I. Emefiele. Mm -hmm. So that has nothing to do with his central bank job. The central bank has his own Twitter account at uh, same bank, mm -hmm. right, which is for official purposes. And if he feels compelled uh, to express himself, to respond to certain issues, on his uh, private uh, Twitter account. I don't think there's a problem with that, as long as he does not conduct CBM business on that uh, private uh, Twitter I'm account. I'm so glad he did that, though. Yeah, so yeah, it, it gives him additional yes, voice. Absolutely. And he can respond to personal issues Correct. Uh, on that uh, Twitter handle. As for people, you know, uh, going to him, calling themselves friends of him, some of the, those uh, persons even continue to place adverts in the papers. And I've been saying, look, Nobody should be pushed or forced or compelled <laughs> to run for the presidency of Nigeria. Okay, if Emefiele is interested, you know, I think he's well over 50 years. He's an adult. You know, he knows what he wants. Mm -hmm. He's governor of the central bank. He's been managing director of a bank. He's been a university uh, uh, lecturer. I mean, he's not in a place where somebody has to dictate to him, you know, whether he wants to be a president or not. And he had responded to this uh, robustly before now to say that, look, it's only God yes. that puts people in positions. And that President Buhari, you know, has a right to plan his own uh, succession. But he thinks that the people who are pushing his name into it uh, by force are persons who are afraid that he may be interested and who are just uh, embarking on a smear campaign uh, to sabotage him. As to the third point, which was raised about public office holders, yes, Maybe that mischief is there, mm -hmm. because if the president signs the uh, the clause uh, the uh, electoral amendment bill as it is, then of course, if he's interested in that position, then you know he'll be duty bound, uh, you know, to resign from his position. A position he can still hold till 20, 
2024. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was reappointed in 2019. A man like him uh, may not be under any uh, compulsion to want to abandon that position, despite the fact that, as we say, he's an adult. And the thing about these political office holders, we have said, is that, look, they finance the electoral process. And the people who have said, you know, they should resign, is to cut off the source of that uh, oxygen yes. that gives them advantage right. over others, and that allows them to be used by their principals, you know, to monetize the process and achieve the objective of the uh, Godfather. I've had some uh, political office holders who have said, well, if they say we should resign, then nobody should ask them for money to mm. finance, uh, you know, primaries or what congresses or zonal congresses because there will be no money to bring. Mm. So that's, I think, is the wrong, the mischief yeah. that the lawmakers are trying to uh, correct. But let's see uh, what the president does when he eventually, you know, uh, either appends his signature to the bill or he raises uh, fresh questions for the assembly. As for buying uh, three planes, well, it's important that Emil Philly clarifies that. Yes. Because he's a, he's a civil servant or a public office holder. So unfair. So where will he get money to buy uh, three aircraft? And for what purpose? If he has any private jet, well, maybe that private jet belongs to the CBN, yeah. mm -hmm. which will be a property of the CBN, which he can use for as long as he's a CBN governor. So I think the clarification he has, he has offered, he has a right to defend his own integrity. Quite on point, Dr. Avati. Rufai, your analysis Truth is, on this. it's open political season. A lot of flying around. Yeah. But please, let us make all the issues this political season based on facts. Mm. If you have the facts, put it out there. He's debunked the three private jets. That's his own fact of the matter. Some people reported it. Mm. But does it make it true? So please, let's make all of this based on facts. Somebody will say facts make you fat. It makes you robust. Please. Secondly, anybody can run for president of this country. He's not made a declaration yet. He's going through the gamut of it. If he makes a declaration, good for him. If it doesn't, good for him. But anybody can be president of the country. I think the most important thing on the table should be how to have conversations on how to fix the problems we have. Right. There are too many problems in Nigeria. Insecurity is one. The economy is another one. Trust me, anybody that will emerge the next president of Nigeria will have to do the hardest job in his life. We fail to realize that it's a country on its knees already. We don't, we don't appreciate the extent of the problems we have. So I think we should focus more on that. And anybody that wants to be president should officially make his declaration so we know what we're dealing with. I agree Come into the ring. I, I, I mean, I hate all of this, you back and forth. You know, if you want it, come in and tell people you want it. Then they can get to assess you. But most importantly, please, let's, let's avoid you know, back and forth. It should be based on facts. Well, all right. And let's also appreciate the problems we have in this country because there's so much problems. And how we can provide solutions to them. Those are the things that matter the most. They're not this back and forth. Let's so take another story. Akiumi Adeshina, president of the African Development Bank, has added his voice to the calls for restructuring on Wednesday while speaking at an event to celebrate the 80th birthday of Pastor Enoch Adeboye, General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, the AFDB president said that restructuring Nigeria should not be done on the basis of sentiments or political inclinations, but on ensuring economic viability of states, adding that resources found in each state or state groupings should belong to the states and that constituent entities should pay federal taxes or royalties for those resources. He also insisted that in strengthening the states or regions, Nigeria's unity will be renewed. Dr. Bati, I'd love your analysis on this topic. Okay, as you pointed out, uh, Dr. Akuma Adeshino, the president of the African Development Bank, was speaking on the occasion of the 80th birthday of uh, uh, the general overseer of the Redeemed Church of Christ. So first, let's join everyone who has wished uh, uh, the general overseer a very happy 
you know, uh, eight years birthday and many more years of service uh, to humanity and in the Lord's uh, vineyard. Uh, 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 Dr. Additional made quite a number of points, even beyond the point about restructuring. Mm -hmm. Yes, he talked about the fact that Nigeria needs to be restructured, not for political expediency, but to make this country more efficient. He talked about federalism. We need to ensure that those states, the various states that we have, are centers of productivity mm -hmm. rather than centers of consumption. Because every state in this country is blessed, you know, either with resources or flora and fauna, biodiversity, and all of that. But these states are dependent. They go cap in hand every month to Abuja. And he says that if each state is autonomous financially, then, of course, nobody will need to be waiting for a location from Abuja on a monthly basis. And I think that that is a point that many people agree with. The thing about restructuring is that people look at it from different dimensions. Okay, There are many issues that they think uh, should be considered. And in this particular regard, he's asking for a federal system, you know, as has been argued by many uh, scholars on the subject. The con our constitution talks about federalism, but we observe it more in the bridge. So even in that regard, you need to review certain sections of the constitution, particularly section uh, 162 and other you know, related sections. Now, he also talked about the fact that people go for national youth service in this country. They can't get jobs because the state where they have served, the only thing they've done there is to just serve. Immediately they finish the national service. Uh, that state will not offer them jobs, even if jobs exist there, because they will say they are not indigenous. And he says, look, people should not have opportunities in uh, Nigeria on the basis of ethnicity or indigeneity. Okay, this indigenous settler politics that it must be possible for opportunities to be open to all. I think that nobody will argue with that. Because we do point. a lot in this country on the basis of ethnicity, on the basis of religion, on the basis of faith. And he was talking to you know, a religious uh, audience uh, largely, and he said, look, Nigerians discriminate against one another. That, that is not acceptable. You know, and the relevant section of the Constitution is section 42. I made a mistake yesterday, I said 35. It's 42 you know, that deals with the right of persons to opportunities without discrimination. So again, you know, he has a point in that regard. Another third point that he made, you know, uh, which uh, I can quickly summarize, is about giving young people opportunities. And okay, what is the biggest resource that Nigeria has? It's youthful population. And you find many of uh, these, uh, you know, young people in Nigeria going about aimlessly you know, uh, no ambition community, you know, in Nigeria. Many of them have become ready recruits uh, for, by, by kidnappers, ritual killers, you know, uh, bandits, terrorists, you know. You find many of these people who are involved in that. They are young people of Nigeria. And he's saying, we need to engage our young people if Nigeria is to compete. So on the whole, I think that he hit uh, all the right notes. And it's good that these issues have come up again. Uh, only a few days ago, uh, uh, former President Ulusha Gumbasunjo was also talking yes, about we took that empowering story. the youth. Absolutely. If you don't empower this uh, energetic, uh, youthful population of Nigeria, uh, what was it that uh, President Gumbasunjo said? He said, you'll be creating the Boko Haram of tomorrow. Right. Mm. So, and you see, Akumi additional, same more or less the same thing. I think we should listen. Yeah. I hope somebody will listen right. beyond the lecture. Tundu, he's one of those people I will vote for if we were to <laughs> declare his intention to run for the country's, uh, you know, president. You're not highest better off as millions, president. Or millions yes. of people no, will, well, I don't, will be with better you. Better off than ruling Nigeria? I mean, Nigeria, we need people like him. Leading Nigeria. Leading Nigeria. Uh, as right I was there. saying, millions <laughs> of people would agree yes. with you if yeah. you don't decide yes. to vote for him, if you put his hat in the ring. He's highly respected, mm -hmm. and for obvious reason. Everything he said, he really just hit it out of the park. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. And this just reminds me, look at the 13% derivation. A lot of people do find that an injustice. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, but one, where I disagree with him was he made a reference to the top of conversation around restructuring being emotive. I don't see it as emotive. It's actually purely pragmatic. Even if we have a precedent, I can't remember additional, or a precedent, I don't know, if we had Lee Kuan Yew, 
you know, resurrect and become president of Nigeria, they're going to fail in this system. There's nobody that can make head or tail out of this unitary system that the military have foisted upon us. We all have to reject mm. it to move forward as a country. Everything you said about youthful nihilism, spot mm. on. This is why we are where we are. It's mm -hmm. really sad. And the discrimination, Lagos State is known as a melting pot. So you have opportunities in Lagos State if you come from other parts of the country. But most other parts of the country have that discrimination. I remember Abia State years ago under um, Dr. Onu, Ogbonaya mm -hmm. Onu, when he was um, governor, he oh, made no. a point of scrapping that, that anywhere you're from in Nigeria, if you live in Abia State, you can aspire to any position. Mm -hmm. That's how it should be. This whole One Nigeria... I Including running that. for election. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can. One mm -hmm. Nigeria, I really wonder sometimes if it's a mirage, but we must continue to try. Right. If I... We could move on to the next story if, if we get a chance. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I think we shall yeah. take another story. The Minister of Labor, Chris Ngige, has come under fire on social media for saying Nigerians would have become refugees in Cameroon and Niger if not for the strong leadership of President Mohamedou Buhari. The minister made the comments during his induction of an honorary fellow of the Institute of Leadership, Entrepreneurship and Corporate Governance in Abuja on Wednesday. The minister also said that without Buhari's leadership qualities, the country will be in crisis like Venezuela. Let's take a reaction from Noah who wrote, aren't we refugees already with same Buhari. How many are in IDP camps in the Northeast and Northwest? How many have died in Southern Kaduna, Benue, Zamfara, Niger? Play two. How many have fled their villages, overrun by Fulani herdsmen? No, but it's true. I, 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 don't we have refugees in Nigeria internally displaced people? Yes, we have IDP camps. Haven't we become refugees being kidnapped by, head, head, uh, by bandits and criminals? Can, can, can you, in broad daylight, travel across the Lagos about the expressway again from after the Shagamu axis down without fearing kidnappers? Hasn't the insecurity situation worsened in this country? It talked about Venezuela. Venezuela, that was When quite... you look back, Venezuela should be a model of what Nigeria is fast becoming. Because Nigeria started with a lot of potential quite the and now it's becoming like Venezuela. God forbid. Truth has to be told, <laughs> Venezuela used to have number four in the world, largest GDP per capita in the world in the 50s. I know. Venezuela used to be a rich nation, but today it's in abject rich. poverty because of corruption and mismanagement. And, and sanctions. And sanctions. Is that not the case? Nigeria is fast becoming now. God we used to it. have a country where the president once, the leader once said, money is not a problem, but how to spend it. Go on. But look at where we are today. Poverty we have capital. over 33% unemployment rate. Is that not the case? But in all of this, I see hope. I know Nigeria can come out of its quagmire. Amen. Yes. We will. I see possibility because this country is the only country I can bet on in the world. It's the best kept secret. But I just hope we get leadership right. And that's why 2023 matters. And most importantly, we hold our leadership accountable to do what is right for the people. A lot of people are suffering, but Nigeria is not a hopeless case. I argue it to the high heavens. It's the best kept secret in the world. But if we get it right, we get it right. So this minister, I don't know why he's saying this, but let's not deceive ourselves. Nigerians, IDPs in this country, but can it stop? Yes, it can stop. We can change all of this, but we need to be serious with ourselves and tell ourselves the truth. God bless Nigeria. God Amen. bless Nigeria. Thank you, Rufai. Thank you, Tundu. Thank you, Dr. Thank Abaki. Thank you, OG. Well, that's all I have for you guys on What's Trending today. I'll see you tomorrow.